So welcome back. We are now in segment 8.4 and in this segment we will be discussing about the various methods of working capital assessment. Right, so far we have uh, calculated MBBF in the form of following manner. Okay. So in the previous segment uh, we discussed about uh, the concept of holding levels right? and we have seen how to calculate the uh, MBBF based on, uh, uh, based on a method known as the second method of lending. If you recall this is what we have done. right? So if you recall this is what we have done in the previous segment. So we have added something known as working capital gap. So how is working capital gap arrived? You take all the current assets and direct creditors. So you get what is known as working capital gap. This working capital gap will be shared between the bank and the borrower margin. It's NWC. Okay. So what is the minimum NWC? Uh, we discussed this is the uh, varies from bank to bank. Normally it is 25% of current assets. For large borrowers it is 25% of current assets. So whatever is the balance, bank will be taking up the share. Okay. So to do this, uh, so during this process we have also uh, discussed about uh, holding levels, right? So we have seen this is how we calculate the how how we arrive at the current assets. We have, there are two small modifications that I will make to this calculation, right? Two modifications, which this is what we had discussed in the previous segment. So now I will make some two 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 small modifications. The first modification is here we said from the current assets we are going to direct creditors. So now I am saying this is not just creditors. Right. This is uh, this we started with a uh, this we have set creators is only for a simplistic understanding, right? So to start a discussion to have a easy understanding, I said a direct creators from current assets. But this is not just creators. This is all current liabilities except bank finance. Okay. Bank finance anyway we are not going to take because that is ultimately what we are interested. In. So bank bank finance anyway will not come. But it's not just creators. It is all current liabilities. So so under liabilities you have term liabilities and current liabilities. Term liabilities have bank term loan, okay, you have unsecured loans, various other items. In current liabilities what do you have? You have bank finance, that is your CC of studying, bank finance. You have your creditors, you have say advance from customers, provision for taxation, various items you have, other current liabilities. Okay, this is what the current liabilities. So now what you have to deduct from current assets is all these items except bank finance. right? Not just creditors, right? all items except bank finance. This is a the correct method. Right? This is one small modification you have to keep in mind. The other modification, so here we are directing, once we obtain the working capital gap, we are directing the uh, minimum NWC and uh, sanctioning the, the balance. Okay. So what happens if the actual NWC is greater than this minimum NWC? Right? Say for example, working capital gap was arrived as arrived at 100. Okay? Working capital gap, we arrived at 100. So, so let us say uh, 20 is the minimum NWC. So we'll sanction bank will sanction 80. Now I'm saying what if the actual NWC is 30 instead of 20? The actual NWC is more than the minimum NWC. Right? When to sanction 80, you're actually going to end up overfinancing the company. Right? So what actually we do is we sanction 100 minus 30, not 100 minus 20. That is 70. Okay. So this is C minus D all right, but we also calculate C minus E. So E might be actual NWC and C whichever is lower. So the lower of difference between C minus D that is working capital gap minus minimum NWC that we have seen. But we also calculate minimum NWC minus actual NWC and whichever is lower we sanction. This I will discuss once again right in this segment. In this segment, we will be discussing in detail. So, I just wanted to give you a brief, a brief preview, right? So, this is the method we had discussed in the previous segment, the the second method of lending. So, but there are other methods of lending. So, you might be curious when when I said second method of lending, what is the second method of lending? Is there a first method of lending? So, actually, there are in total uh, five total five different methods of uh, five different methods of assessment to calculate the MBBF. Okay, we'll discuss each one of them. But you have to remember that the second method of lending is the most uh, commonly used uh, method in Indian banks. Right, is the, is the most standard assessment method. For small borrowers, banks use something called turnover method. Right, that is one of the five methods we are going to discuss. Okay, turnover method. But then, but then turnover method is actually for small borrowers. Right. But even in this case, what banks do is they, they do assessment both as per turnover method and the second method of lending. They, they do both, okay? And whichever is higher, they sanction, okay? This is a practical point. So these are the five assessment methods used for assessing working capital limits. Turnover method, MBBA first method, second method, third method, and cash budget method. So out of this, uh, the second method is the uh, number one uh, uh, most preferred 
uh, assessment method okay Tableau method is also followed maybe the second most popular this is actually for small borrowers right for large borrowers you invariably do second method of lending for small borrowers Tableau method is followed uh, cash budget is one more method you can follow that is for seasonal industries okay the other methods the first method and the the third method is actually not uh, actually implemented in any banks okay this is more of academic interest they're not actually implemented in uh, Indian banks okay so you need to be more comfortable with the second method of lending and to some extent turnover method and cash budget so let us start with the turnover method so turnover method is actually based on the recommendations of NIAC committee okay so uh, this was actually for, this is actually for small borrowers okay so who is a small borrower again it is a, a matter of judgment so some banks might say uh, borrowers who who have limits less than five crores is small borrower six crores it varies from uh, bank to bank okay so once the bank uh, defines a policy uh, who is a small borrower for those borrowers they will be following the assessment method under turnover method so the origins of this method was that RBI uh, there was a perception that the small borrowers are not actually getting adequate uh, finance on the banking sector so based on the recommendations from my company so what RBI stipulated was that bank should sanction working capital limit at least 20% of the annual turnover of the firm right so so the logic here is the annual turnover 25% of this annual turnover will be the a minimum working capital requirement of any firm this is what RBI has assumed again behind this there is another logic that the operating cycle is three months right the operating cycle this, this is a concept which we discussed in the earlier segment so the the RBI assumed that the for small borrowers operating cycle will be at least three months so so it is obvious if the operating cycle is three months they have to maintain current at least current assets at least 25 percent of the uh, annual set isn't it so 100 by 25 percent right 100 by 4 that is three months so this is the logic so this is the minimum working capital requirement out of this obviously again there should be some margin and there will be some uh, bank finance so this margin will be five percent of turnover and this is 20 percent of turnover okay so say for example if the turnover is 100 four crores okay so the minimum and so the minimum working capital requirement as per RBI norms is 100 25 percent of this out of this right out of this bank will be sanctioning 80 borrower has to bring 20 this is the this is simply turnover method a very simple method nothing complex about it right straight away bank will sanction 20 percent of the 20 percent of the annual turnover whatever is the turnover straight away sanction 20 percent of the annual turnover okay uh, there is an assumption here that there be there are no creators for this firm right so in reality we said uh, we discussed that firms will be availing credit both on the uh, customer customer side and the uh, raw material supplier side business in business credit is normal uh, but this method turnover method assumes that there are no creditors right uh, because this was small borrowers RBI has uh, stipulated straight away take 20 percent of annual turnover actually if you direct creditors uh, the bank finance will be coming down but then you can ignore that for the moment under this method we straight away take 20 percent of the annual turnover okay so in practice what is done is banks do assessment both under the turnover method and the second method of lending even for small borrowers even for small borrowers they do, they do assessment on the second method of lending also and whichever is higher the sanction okay again I said who is a small borrower depends on the bank policy so you need to refer your banks uh, loan policy guidelines so accordingly apply turnover method for small borrowers so say for example the uh, projected turnover of the firm is 450 right so 2013 is completed so the firm has submitted audit balance sheets for the past three years 2011 present 13 now it is now it is preparing CMA data of projections for the next two years 14 15 so uh, for 14 it's saying a turnover is going to be 450 so under turnover mother straight away 20 percent of the turnover that is 90 lakhs isn't it 90 lakhs is the uh, bank finance to be sanctioned straight away so this is turnover method uh, but if you remember uh, I, I raised a small point at the beginning of the segment what if the actual NWC is more than 5 percent of the annual sales so we said 25 percent of the turnover will be the uh, the minimum working capital requirement of a small company okay so out of this 5 percent will be the should be the minimum NWC 5 percent of turnover 20 percent of annual turnover will be the bank finance this is what we said so what happens in case the actual NWC is more than the minimum NWC right take this take this example 25 percent of the and this is the minimum required uh, 25 percent of the annual sales will be the minimum working capital requirement of this firm out of this um, the margin should be 22.5 right and the balance 90 will be bank this is what the turnover mother says but what happens if the actual NWC happens to be 30 lakhs so then what should we should do is we should sanction only we should sanction only 112.5 minus not 90 minus 12.5 minus 30 we'll sanction only 82.5 see the logic is very simple 
say for example there is a housing loan customer he has applied for 10 lakhs right he wants to buy a house of 12 lakhs so 12 lakhs 10 lakhs is the the loan he is applying for housing loan okay 2 lakhs is margin but as a bank you want to somehow uh, reduce the exposure to this borrower you are not particularly interested you want to take a lower exposure so you found out that the, this borrower has a, a fixed deposit of 3 lakhs so you asked him uh, what are your sources of 2 lakhs he said i have a fixed deposit of 3 lakhs okay so since you want to reduce the exposure you 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 say why should i sanction uh, 10 lakhs i'll sanction only 9 lakhs because he, he he has 3 lakhs at his disposal so here if you see the the loan requirement so the so the total requirement is 12 lakhs okay total requirement is 12 lakhs so if you want to see the eligibility the housing loan eligibility here requirement minus the minimum margin so as per bank's margin this is 2 so 12 minus 2 10 but if the actual margin available is 3 we saw that he has got a fixed deposit of 3 lakhs so requirement minus actual available margin is 3 so we will sanction only 9 whichever is lower right if you happen to sanction 10 lakhs you will be over financing the company so so in the same way here also so what you should do is you take the requirement right that is 112.5 minus the minimum margin minimum margin is 22.5 okay you, you said this is 90 lakhs solid but you also calculate this min requirement 112.5 minus actual available margin that is 30 now you got 82.5 whichever is lower you sanction in this case if you sanction 90 you will be ending up over financing the company okay so this you should remember so so this 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 is a point you need to uh, remember. Okay, so uh, so a calc so so a calculation will be uh, this is what we calculate. Okay, so calculate the turnover. So projected turnover twenty five percent of that will be the minimum working capital point. Out of this minimum NWC is twenty two point five, A minus B ninety. That is the bank finance. All right, ninety we calculate. But we also calculate what is A minus C. That is working capital gap minus actual NWC. You calculate that also. Which is lower? You sanction. Right. So this difference that seven point five. 90 minus 82 minus 5 is nothing but the NWC in excess of the minimum required NWC, right? We'll see the, we'll now move on to the first method of learning. Uh, not a very popular method, but uh, for academic interest, we can, uh, since we're discussing all the methods, we need to, uh, we can focus on this. We can, we can briefly discuss this. So in uh, MPBF method, first method, what we do was, what we do is take the current assets, less current liabilities other than bank finance, working capital cap, same as the second method. Up to here, same as the second method. What we did in the second method? Current assets less, all current liabilities except bank finance, arrive at working capital gap. Out of this working capital gap, minimum NWC will be 25% of current assets. Okay, Balance will be bank finance. So here, up to here it is same on the first method. So here, instead of 25% of current assets, straight away we take 25% of working capital gap. Straight away of this component, 25% will take. The balance bank will be finance. This is a very a simple concept, but then not a very a popular concept in bank this is something which banks don't follow follow in actual practice right so second method of lending this we discussed in the previous segment so please be clear on this okay current assets minus all current liabilities except bank finance you get the working capital gap from the working capital gap you have to do from the work once you get the working capital gap you have to do two things one you calculate minimum nwc that is 25 percent of current assets you also calculate what is the actual nwc right this is so this is one this is two this is three so one minus two is what actually the bank finance is but you also calculate one minus three and whichever is lower you sanction is the bank finance okay so this is the second method of lending third method of lending not a very popular method but uh, wh what is done in series from the current assets they deducted core assets so what is core assets core asset or core core current assets are uh, this is the absolute minimum level of raw material process stock finished goods right which are in the pipeline required to ensure continuity of production okay so from that you did the from current assets you did core assets you arrive at the balance current assets okay then rest of the process is same current liabilities other bank finance working capital gap minimum 25 percent of current assets balance current assets okay and you are at the mbbf it's not a very popular method actually if you take a one single example same example and you calculate the eligibility of uh, as per all the three methods mbbf first method second method third method you will find that the, the third method will actually result in the lowest bank finance okay first method will be uh, resulting in the maximum from bank finance the third method will usually result in the lowest bank finance okay but anyway this is not the very popular method you have to understand the second method of lending is the uh, standard assessment uh, method in indian banks okay 
So the last method is the cash budget method. This is based on the uh, recommendation of the Canon company. So what the company recommended was company should submit quarterly cash budgets for one financial year. Okay, and based on this, based on this, uh, working capital limit should be fixed to the extent of deficit in cash flow from operations. But then this is a complex calculation. Even the bank officers are not very comfortable with the uh, concept of cash budget and all. So this really was never implemented. Okay, cash budget is followed in case of seasonal industries. Right for seasonal industries, we do that like sugar and rice mills. Okay, so what happens in seasonal industries? There will be a lot of fluctuations. Right, so in all the method methods so far, we we said current assets minus uh, all current liabilities except bank finance, working capital cap. So in this in, in all these calculations, we had this current assets. So the figure which you are taking here is the 31st March figure. Okay, as per the balance sheet. But then uh, we are taking this figure only because we have only access to this particular figure from the balance sheet. But behind this is, is an assumption that by and large this will be the current assets figure on an average for any given day. We are not very particular because it might go up, go down, go up, go down. But on an average it will be around this level. So we are not very particular. But in case of seasonal investors, the the value might change. So during peak season it, this might be very high. During off peak season, during off season it will be very low. So in cases where the closing balance sheet figure is actually not representative of the entire year, right? There will there will be also be using cash budget. Okay. So also in case of contractors and real estate, we will be using cash budget. So what do they do? What they do in cash budget is the a peak deficit is arrived for the entire twelve months. For the next one year, they arrive at the uh, peak deficit and they sanction the limit. And the drawings, the actual drawings, will be uh, based on the monthly cash budget, right? So this is what they do. So for the for the for the next for the coming twelve months, you you see what is the peak deficit. So in in the first month, say it's only twenty twenty, then thirty, ten, forty, sixty. 90, 100. This this is a peak season. Okay, this is the these three months are peak season. The limit is very high. Then maybe it drops down to 60, 10, 20 like that, right? So so based on these projections, the company the bank will be sanctioning 100 lakhs as the working capital limit based on the cash because because the this is the peak deficit. Then during when it comes to actual drawal drawals, okay, during the off peak season they will be restricting limit to a lower level. So they won't allow the entire 100 lakhs during off peak season. During off season, they will allow lower. So that is based on the cash budget. During peak season, they will be allowing the entire element. Okay, this is this is the cash budget. This we'll discuss later in this in detail later. So one point we have left so far uh, in our discussions is export receivables. Okay, so current assets less, all current liabilities except bank finance. We are having the working capital cap. Okay. Out of this, 25% of the current assets is the minimum NWC balance of the bank finance. Okay, right. But in case of export, so what this current assets com comprise of 25% of current assets when we are calculating how we calculate current assets. So it will be uh, raw material, stores and spares, working progress, finished goods, debtors, right? So these debtors, where in case of export, in case of export accounts when we have export receivables, since they are self-liquidating. Since export receivables are self-liquidating, what we do? We exclude from the current assets calculation. While calculating this minimum NWC 25% of current assets, we don't take the entire current assets. We take all this raw material, everything. But export assets, export receivables will be deducting. So say raw material is 10, this is 20, 30, 10. In receivables, we have domestic receivables 5 and 10. So you add up all this. Say for example, you got 80. We will not take 25% of current assets. From 80, you deduct this export receivables minus 10. You will get 70. Only on this you calculate the Uh, 25% of uh, minimum, 25% of 70. So the, you'll calculate the minimum and we'll see based on uh, current assets less export receivables. Right? This is one thing you have to keep in mind. So we are now in a better position to answer the question which we posed in the previous segment. Okay. So if you remember in term loan appraisal, so on the project cost we had various items, right? So one of the item was margin for working capital. So there we asked why why is working capital appearing in uh, term loan, right? Term loan and working capital are entirely two different. Uh, forms of finance. This is for the fixed assets, and this is for the uh, running expenses, right? Like lot of like raw material and all. So why why is this working capital coming in project cost, right? So now we are in a better position to answer that. Okay. So since since now we have understood what is the NWC, right? We can now uh, we can now understand. We can now answer this question. If you remember, the project cost ha has got various items. Okay. So there was land, there was building, uh, machinery, furnitures. Interest during construction. Now all of the preliminary operating expenses we had uh, contingency. All all items relating to uh, the the project. Okay, and then we had something called margin for working capital. Put together we had the project cost. Okay, so say the project cost was arrived at some hundred crores. 
So we said uh, we'll replace the margin say 25 percent. So borrower will be paying 25 crores. Right? Bank will sanction with the 75 crores. So why why is this margin for working capital uh, appearing here? So what banks actually says? So irrespective of whatever is the finance, whether it is for the fixed asset or for any other current asset. So whatever finance banks uh, extend the, for for fixed assets they extend term loan for current assets they extend working capital like CC, right? So whatever may be the 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 asset. There should be some borrower margin. This we discussed. There should always be. We should bank banks bank should ensure there is a borrower stake in the business. So whatever is the asset, right? Whether it's a fixed asset or current asset, there should be some borrower margin. So these are all the fixed assets. Okay. So in fixed assets, we are ensuring the margin is coming. So say for example, we are not taking into account margin for working capital. Okay. Say this is ten crores. So now we we have not taken this into account. So obviously our project cost will come down by. 10 crores, so this will be 90. So borrower margin is 15 crores, and uh, this will be 75 crores, right? So it's not that this is not this is this is not uh, 25 percent of 90, right? This is not the 25 percent of 90 because margin for working capital banks will not finance. This is 100 percent uh, borrower's margin. This banks won't finance. So if if, if this is not there uh, directly, the borrower's margin will come down. So 25 will become. 15. Okay, so this 90 is now going to be financed by 15 crores. Borrowers margin is 75 crores. Uh, bank finance. Okay, this 90 crores. All these were. Uh, so land was purchased. Construction has happened. Uh, machinery was erected, installed. Everything was done, and COD was achieved. This is the commercial operations. The date has arrived. Okay. So now at this stage, let us assume. Now the current assets will come into picture. So till this stage, let us say this whole entire. a uh, construction has taken one year so during this period 90 crores was spent from a uh, borrower 15 crores and bank 75 crores everything was done all the fixed assets were required now when the cod has come when the project when the production uh, is to begin after one year the current assets will come into picture so again at this stage when so the borrower will come and ask the bank to sanction working capital limit right say say it is asked to sanction 20 crores cc limit now again banks will ask where is your margin right where is your margin because this margin 15 crores so far is only for the fixed assets So now we are just sanctioning CC. Where is your margin? Now at this stage, the borrower says, "I cannot bring uh, any more amount, right? I have exhausted all my resources. My my the maximum amount that that I, that I can bring was 15 crores, and that I already brought. Now I can't bring any. Now I cannot bring uh, this uh, any more any more margin. I can't do that. If if he says uh, at that stage, if he says like this, the project will come to a halt. At that stage, there are only two options. One bank should sanction, should take up the entire working capital requirement. Should sanction the entire working capital requirement without insisting for margin, in which case there will be, in which case will be lending without without margin. That is against the basic tenets of banking. With this, we said we are not going to accept. Or the other option is just to stop. Don't don't take up the working capital finance. But in that case, the there will be no production. So the bank's entire seven fifty crores will be blocked. So how is bank going to recover the seven fifty crores? The project should go on. Uh, the product should be produced, sold, money realized, and then repayment will happen. If 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 the project doesn't, uh, if the working capital is not sanctioned. The project will be halted. So uh, there will be problems of this sort. Well, so what banks do is right at the stage, right at the stage of the appraisal, terminal appraisal itself, right at the the very beginning. What they do, they 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 assess the what is the total margin the borrower should bring. Fifteen crores, all right for the fixed assets. But what is the working capital margin? This is not required right now. During this one year construction, it is not required right now. But we'll 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 make an assessment. So ten crores. So total twenty five crores is the margin. And during this appraisal, terminal appraisal, they'll see whether the borrower is financially sound to bring 25 crores. Financially sound, not just to bring this 15 crores, but also whether he is capable of bringing the entire 25 crores. This are, this again is not required right now, right? During this one year, only this 15 crores is required. But is he capable of bringing the entire 25 crores? That is a part of the assessment, the terminal assessment. That's why they ta they taking the margin for working capital. That is why the margin for working capital is also taken as part of the project cost. Okay, so. If you remember the the item wise uh, when we did, how we arrived at the eligibility, so we said land maybe forty percent margin, building forty percent, the machinery varies from bank to bank. Okay, machinery twenty five percent, or furniture forty percent, maybe this is um, maybe this is fifty percent, fifty percent like this. And then we said for margin for working capital, it is hundred percent margin. Banks will not finance anything. Entire hundred percent it has to be brought by brought by the by the borrower. This is why we said. Because this is the borrower's margin, bank is not going to finance, and the, so at the appraisal stage, the banks will take into account whether the borrower is financially sound to bringing the whole margin, both for the fixed assets and the current assets, right? That is that is why margin for working capital is included in the as part of the project cost. 
So with this, we come to the end of this uh, segment of assessment of working capital. We have seen five five methods of working capital assessment. We said the most popular is the the second method of lending. You should also be aware of the turnover method and the the cash budget method, right? But this is the most important standard. So this completes the assessment of working capital. But there are some uh, additional points which you need to keep in mind. This will be discussing in the uh, coming as coming segments. This will be point. This will be uh, topics relating to uh, let us say a drawing power. DP is a very important concept when when it comes to uh, working capital limits. Okay, drawing power. Uh, we'll be discussing about uh, be discussing about excess drawals. Okay. Uh, various other items right? right diversion of funds this is very common companies uh, do divert uh, uh, funds sanctioned for working capital purpose to long term uses okay so these are the points which we will going to discuss in the coming segments this is the assessment part what we have done till now is the assessment part these are the uh, practical points which you need to keep in mind while dealing with working capital uh, limits okay so this will be uh, taking up in the uh, coming segments right see you then